Well, here I have on the right-hand side the exam guide, and I'm just going to walk you quickly through it, just so you get a kind of a breakdown of what it is that um, AWS recommends that we uh, should learn, and how uh, this um, this exam is broken up in terms of uh, uh, domains, and also its scoring, okay? So here on the left-hand side, we're going to first look at the content outline, okay? If we just uh, scroll down here, uh, you can see it's broken up into five domains, and we get uh, a, a, bun a bunch more additional information. Okay, so we have a design resilient architectures, design performant architectures, specify secure applications and architectures, design cost optimized architectures, and define operational excellent architectures. Now, I highlighted the word um, in there resilient, performance, secure, cost optimized, and operational excellence because this actually maps uh, to the five pillars of the well architected framework, which is a recommended read uh, for um, study here. Okay. Um, so there is a, a rhyme and rhythm to uh, this layout here, which we will talk about when we get to the white paper section. Uh, but let's just look at, uh, inside of each of these domains. So for resilient architecture, you have to choose re reliable and resilient storage. So there we're talking about uh, Elastic Block Store in S3 and all the uh, different um, storage uh, uh, options available to us. Design how to design decoupling mechanisms using AWS uh, services. So they're talking about application integration, such as SQS and SNS. Then we have uh, design how to, or determine how to design a multi-tier architecture solution. Uh, maybe they're hinting there at, uh, well, it says multi-tier. So when you have tiers, you, you would have your database layer, your web layer, um, uh, your load balancing layer, okay? So that's probably what they mean by tiers. Uh, determine how to design high avail uh, availability or fault tolerant architectures. So that's gonna be knowing how to use row 53, load balancing, auto scaling groups, what happens when an AZ goes out, what happens when a region goes out, uh, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, the next thing is design performant architecture. So choose performance storage and uh, databases. So that's just going to be knowing DynamoDB versus RDS versus Redshift, okay? That we can apply caching to improve performance. That's going to know that DynamoDB has a caching layer. That's going to be uh, uh, knowing how to use Elastic Cache or maybe using CloudFront to cache your static content. Then we have uh, design solutions for elasticity and scalability. So uh, that sounds pretty much like auto scaling groups uh, to me, okay? And then we got uh, uh, specified security applications and architecture so determine how to secure application tiers so again there's three tiers database web uh, network uh, or load balancing there's obviously other tiers there but just knowing when to check box uh, um, to turn on security uh, for those services and how that uh, that stuff works uh, uh, from a general perspective okay Determine how to secure data. So just knowing data at rest, uh, like um, data uh, in transit, okay? Uh, then defining the networking infrastructure for a single VPC application. This is about knowing uh, VPCs inside and out, which we definitely cover heavily uh, in the Solution Architect Associate and all the associate certifications because it's so darn important. Then we have design cost optimized architecture. So determine how to design cost optimized storage, determine how to design cost optimized compute. We're talking about storage. They're probably really, really talking about S3. S3 has a bunch of storage classes that you can change and they get cheaper uh, the further down you go. Um, and knowing uh, when and how to use that for compute. Maybe they're talking about uh, just knowing uh, when to use uh, different kinds of EC2 instances, or maybe using auto scaling groups to reduce that cost to, uh, to re uh, scale out when you don't uh, have a lot of usage. Then the last one here is design operational excellent architecture. So design features and solutions that enable oper uh, enable operational excellence, okay? And so you can see, and I'm not even exactly sure what they're saying here, um, but that's okay because it's worth 6%, okay? Uh, it's definitely co covered in the course. It's just, uh, it's a, a, a funny worded one there. I never could remember what they're saying there, okay? But you can see the most important one here is designing resilient architecture, okay? So that's the highest one there. And the last two is cost and operational excellence. So. Um, you're not going to be hit with too many uh, cost questions, but you just generally have to know, um, you know, when it makes sense to use X over Y. All right. Um, so, yeah, there's the outline and we will move on uh, to the next part here. And that's the response types. OK, so uh, this uh, exam, I believe, has uh, 65 questions. I don't think it actually states it uh, in here. 
but it generally it's 65, okay? A lot of times when you take the exams, they'll actually have additional questions in there that are not scored because they're always testing out new questions. Questions are gonna come in two formats, multiple choice. So we're gonna have the uh, standard one out of four, and then we're gonna have multiple response, uh, which is gonna be choose two or more out of five or more, okay? Generally, it's always two out of five, but um, I guess sometimes you could have three out of six. All right, um, and so uh, just be uh, aware of that. Now the passing score for this is going to be um, 720 points out of 10,000 points. Okay, so they have this point system and so 720 is passing. So the way you can think about it, it's 72%, which is a C minus to pass. All right, I put a tilde there. Uh, I know it looks a bit funny there, but the tilde means to say like about or around because that value can um, fluctuate. So the thing is, is that it's not exactly 72%. You could go in and get 72% and fail. You could go and get 75% and fail. It just depends on how many people are taking the exam and they're going to adjust it based on um, how many people are passing or failing, okay? But it doesn't, it doesn't uh, fluctuate too far from this point, okay? It's not gonna be like you have to get 85%, all right? Uh, and then just the last thing here is the white papers. So AWS recommends white papers uh, for you to read and um, they're not very clear here. So they, they do uh, architecting for the cloud, AWS best practices. That's one you should definitely read. It's not a very difficult read. So it's on the top of your reading list. And then there's AWS well -architect, uh, architected web page. And so that web page contains a bunch of white papers. And this is the full list here. Okay, so we have the well-architected framework, which talks about the five pillars, and then uh, then they actually have a white paper for each pillar. And then there's these uh, other ones down below, which are kind of new additions. So the question is, do you have to read all of these things? No. In fact, you should just probably just read the top one here, the AWS well-architected framework, and you could read half of that and you'd still be good. It is great to uh, dive into these uh these ones here, so they are still listed here. The last ones here are definitely 100% optional. I do not believe they are on the exam, but again, they just tell you to go to the entire page. So it is a bit confusing there. So hopefully um, that gives you a, a bit of a breakdown and so you are prepared uh, what's ahead of you for study.